Hello, my name is Nora Marlowe Smith, and I'm a third year MFA in set design candidate at Northwestern University. I am the set and costume designer for The Death of the Last Black Man in the Whole Entire World, aka The Negro Book of the Dead by Susan Ori Parks, directed by Mana Simone Middlebrooks. For this designer presentation, I will take you through my thoughts about the piece and my design research and set model, as well as my costume research and sketches. Here we go. This piece means so much to me. I think it's about so many things and is especially relevant right now because of the loss of black life in this country due to police violence and the ongoing pandemic. My goal with this project was to uplift the text and support the director, creating a visual environment to ground us in the world of this piece while also offering visual support for the recorded reading, which I'll talk about in a bit. I've been a huge fan of Susan Laurie Parks' work for a long time. I read 365 Days, 365 Plays when I was a senior in high school. Susan Laurie and I also went to the same undergrad, obviously not at the same time. It's difficult for me to speak about this text in a linear way because the text itself is nonlinear. It's round and round and layers and reads so much more like a spell than a play. Indeed, Susan Laurie Parks has referred to it as an incantation. I believe this piece is a summons, a ritual, a rite. It is the beginning and the end of something. It is a calling forward and a calling back. A reference on a reference on a reference. A palimpsest. There are no characters, there are figures. A figure transcends time and space. It's also a story of love the deep and tender love between black man and black woman. As I worked through the text, I uncovered a number of questions. I think the text is asking, how does one move within grief? How can someone hold history? How does this ritual end? How does it begin? How to be in charge of one's own self? How does someone know what is theirs? How does someone recognize that which is of them? What does it mean to be too big, to be out of place, to be put in one's place? Susan Laurie Parks is writing out of archetypes and stereotypes. And I found myself researching other black artists that work in and around that history and that work within stereotypes and archetypes. I found a lot of inspiration from Kara Walker and her use of silhouette felt similar to the way Susan Laurie Parks is playing with stereotypes and history. I also found inspiration in the paintings of Kerry James Marshall and his use of black pigment as a celebration of blackness and black life. This play is one of many Susan Laurie Parks plays that is set in an exact replica of the great whole of history. As Mana and I worked through these ideas, I found myself wondering, what does this space really look like and what does it need to be doing to support this text? I was drawn to a lot of images of earth and dirt, roundness and layers, tree rings and sedimentary layers showing growth and age and history, and also showing roots. This space is a sacred space, a grave and a womb. As I was researching, I was reminded of something my grandmother said when my grandfather died. She said she wanted to crawl into a hole and pull the hole in after her. When I brought this idea to Mana, she read me a, another quote from Susan Laurie Park's play, The America Play. He digged a hole and the hole held him. Through the text, we hear references to things being buried or under or dripping or drowned. The whole of history, but also the whole of history, the entirety of history. Here are some explorations of light in the model I made. We decided to set it to set this in the Wallace Theater at Northwestern. It's an intimate space with a three quarter thrust and an exposed theater space. We were interested in the closeness and the simplicity of it. The space starts out barren, just dirt and maybe a single chair. As we move into the text and through the ritual, 
Things emerge from the dirt, bells and instruments, pieces of history, watermelons, flowers, and vines. The movement of the actors would push aside that dirt revealing tree rings underneath. There is a cleansing moment when black man is preparing to be laid to rest. In that moment, a space appears, a six by six by six of light where we're prepared to let him go. I created this finished model partly because I was just too excited about the idea and partly as a way to give the actors in the reading a sense of place to help them, to help ground them while tackling a very abstract piece of text. The costume design is also layered inside of sacred space and text. Each person in the text is treated by Susan Laurie Parks as a figure. A figure is different than a character because a figure transcends time and space. A figure is someone who exists in the past and is called into now or exists in the future, a conglomerate of many people inside of one body. The beginning of this piece begins with a summoning. The figures are summoned to help bring black man with watermelon to rest. Before I share my research, I wanna give a content warning. Some of the coming images contain photos of black men who have been murdered by the police. There are also images of scarification and wounds on a person's body. I will go through figure by figure and talk about inspiration for each. As Mana and I considered these costume designs, we thought about who these figures are right now. Black man with watermelon is all the men that should still be here. He is an every man caught between life and death. He is George Floyd and Eric Garner. He is trying to get home. Mana and I were interested in putting this figure in layers. Black man with watermelon describes all the ways that he has died over and over again. Mana and I were interested in seeing that history written on his body. Over the course of the incantation, Black man goes into a washing moment with Black woman. We thought it might be a moment where more of his body becomes exposed and we see the history of that pain. We were also interested in the West African tradition of scarification as a way of declaring status, life history, or spiritual political significance. Black woman with fried chicken drumstick. If black man is Odysseus, black woman with fried chicken drumstick is Penelope. She is the homecoming. She is an every woman trying to bring her man home. As I was researching this figure, I was in mind of Rachel Cargill, an activist and writer who is unafraid to speak her mind and speak her grief. Mana and I were also interested in seeing history of pain written on black women's body, especially through the ways in which black women have been denied access to reproductive health care and health resources. There is a deep and abiding love and tenderness to black women and black man's relationship. Ham, Ham is a source of wisdom and history, a keeper of history, someone who has been around since the beginning. Mana and I also talked about Ham as the ultimate intellectual. For me, the research led me to Angela Davis. Her activism and voice have been powerful for a long time. Ham as a keeper of the record and a keeper of lineage just felt right. Queen then Pharaoh had Shepsut, regal, dazzling, and a powerhouse. Immediately we thought of Jennifer Lewis. I found this image of her in a metallic jumpsuit and I also found this image of Glenn Close in this gold dress, this cape. In the sketch, I've combined them into a gold jumpsuit and cape. We were thinking about Queen as one of the keepers of history, one of the figures called back into to bring this man home and lay him to rest. Old Man River Jordan is another keeper of history. The River Jordan is one of ancient salvation. We thought of him as another source of wisdom, worn by time, but still with it. I was put in mind of James Meredith, an original civil rights activist. I was also thinking about representation of many different ages and bodies on this stage and how that tells a full rich history of experience. Before Columbus is also a piece of history, pre-Columbian history and pre-colonization. And in the same vein as Ham, the ultimate intellectual, 
We also talked about before Columbus as being a retired hothead and someone who used to be a trailblazer. This put me in mind of Hank Aaron, who recently passed. He pushed the boundaries and forged new paths in his lifetime. I was interested in him, and I was also interested in this classically academic look as a nod to the layers of Black man and the layers of history in his body. Bigger and bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger and bigger is a younger version of Black man with watermelon. I was thinking of Trayvon Martin. For those of you who aren't familiar, Trayvon Martin was murdered by a civilian in Florida in 2012 for walking while Black. The shooter, George Zimmerman, was acquitted 17 months later and the Black Lives Matter movement grew out of that outrage. The Black hoodie gained momentum as a uniform for protesters after a news anchor said that Black people should not wear them as it could endanger their lives. Mana and I talked about this as a uniform for Bigger because he is a young activist and he is angry and he's containing all of that in his body. We also discussed the possibility of him wearing all black but with a pop of color and expression in his shoes. Yes, and greens, black eyed peas and cornbread and lots of grease and lots of pork. There are several moments in the text where yes and and lots of grease say the same thing at the same time. I began to think of them as siblings. Mana and I were interested in giving and having these siblings be two young people who are pushing the boundaries of gender and pushing the boundaries of, of sexuality. I was immediately put in mind of Willow and Jaden Smith, but also of activist siblings, Che Gossett and Tourmaline. Che is a writer and activist who specializes in queer theory, abolition, AIDS advocacy, and sex work advocacy. Tourmaline is a performer and filmmaker, trans activist, and economic justice writer. Prunes and Prisms. Prunes and Prisms is uptight and contained. I was thinking of Simone Biles in this research because of her drive and her unwillingness to compromise even to make other people feel more comfortable. Mana sent me this offensive Gucci sweater research and we were interested in this look for Prunes and Prisms because of her name, a racist mouth exercise said to cure large lips. Voice on the TV. Voice on the TV is a person who spends time in multiple worlds. Voice on the TV can be thought of as sort of respectability politics. He spends a lot of time navigating predominantly white spaces and code switching between communities. I was thinking of Van Jones in this research because of his presence in our media and also because of his vulnerability after the election. All of these figures carry so much history in them they are a combination and layers of people living and dead. For the reading, Mana and I decided to keep things fairly simple, but each actor has their look based on our conversations and our research together. The layout of the Zoom is also curated by Mana and myself. Placing the faces in a circle felt right for this piece rather than the customary rectangular sc screen boxes. We wanted to put figures into pairs and oppose them in the circle while certain figures feature in certain moments and occupy the center. That is everything I have for my design presentation for the death of the last black man in the whole entire world by Susan Laurie Parks, directed by Mana Simone Middlebrooks and produced by the Word Center for the Performing Arts. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brian Jordan. I am the lighting designer for the death of the last black man in the whole entire world. This is a behind the scenes look into my theoretical design for this play. This play for me works like a spell or ritual, transporting the audience to a space void of time and place. It feels like past, present, and future are happening simultaneously allowing for audiences to view an uncomfortable piece of Black history while remembering it still happens to this day. This spell calls on the spirits of Black ancestry to come together as we lay another Black life to rest. This ritual brings us all together to celebrate the life of Black men with watermelon and the love he and Black women with fried drumsticks share as they endure the seemingly never-ending threat to Black lives. I believe through adversity and pain, 
we tend to float to those who make us feel safe. And that is exemplified in this text. I began researching black art and the ways in which black life and blackness is celebrated, viewing works from artists like Carrie James Marshall, Carol Walker, Delita Martin, Charles White. I was drawn to the various uses of color, texture, and line that make up these brilliant pieces of art. Some works deal with troubling subject matter, but you can feel the love and affection put into each piece of artwork. I wanted the lighting design to extend that love and celebration of life. During the second part of my research, I was drawn to images of circles and tree rings, things of a cyclical nature. This text feels like a never-ending loop, that if we stuck around after the final bows, another person would enter the space and we will start the ritual all over again telling this new figure story. Director Mana Simone Middlebrooks mentioned during one of our initial meetings that she was drawn as well to tree rings, saying that in these tree rings, you see the entire life of the tree, all the imperfections, burrowed insects, scarring from animals and the elements over the years, which I really connected with. I was also really drawn to this image of a Japanese Enso. In the Japanese culture, only someone truly whole, someone spiritually complete, can draw a true or perfect Enso. It got me thinking of a few things. Does a perfect or true Enso ever exist? Does wholeness or completeness exist in our life? Or is the completeness resultant of our death? And only in death have we reached a spiritual wholeness in the finishing of our Enso means the finishing of our time alive on Earth. Moving on to lighting elements, I was interested in the different types of activation in the text. We have a chorus as well as our two main figures of black man with watermelon and black woman with fried drumstick, both the individual as well as the ensemble. This drew me to images that played with the various isolation and varying visibilities of our figures. What does it look and feel like when we see when we only see the two main figures? What if we see silhouettes of the chorus upstage? What if we only see half of our ensemble? I wanted to explore the different ways to activate both the figures and the space they inhabit. What if we see only half of the stage? How does that change the perception of the text? This led me to images of shafts of light isolated people downstage with a line of the ensemble upstage, performers interacting with lighting elements. To zoom in even more, what does it look and feel like if we only activate certain parts of the figure? How does it look and feel if we only see half of somebody's face? Or we see everything but their face? What if we only see their hand? What if we only see their shadow? How does what we see and how much of what we see influence our perception of the text? I would have liked to play with those types of selective visibility compositions in this production. I hope you enjoyed this peek behind the curtain into the process of designing lights for the death of the last black man in the whole entire world. And I hope you enjoy the show.